Watch where you step. The mudslinging is going to begin very soon. Provincial election campaign ads are going to hit the airwaves. And Tom Hayes is here now to roll some of the forest. Tom. Welcome to the next level of the provincial election campaign, also known as attack ad season. As of today, they are everywhere on radio, on television, and of course, in print. So you are about to be bombarded with a whole bunch of this. That's nonsense. We should get it back to politics, where politics is about where am I going to take this promise? How am I going to reinvent it? Tony Chapman has reinvented marketing in a social media age. Kathleen Wynne can't run away from her scandals. Tim Hudak wants to make classrooms more crowded. The provincial attack ads were released today. Attack ads that generally get this kind of reaction on the street. I don't like them. You don't like them? No, I think Why? people should just be selling their own their own program. When it resorts to attacking a person's character or whatnot, then you really are grasping for straws. Not impressed. Really? Yeah. But what impresses the experts is that the attack ads work in a very subtle way. They plant a seed in your mind that that party and that leader that you thought you believed in or you're going to cast your vote for no longer is worthy of the job. And this kind of approach is nothing new. They date back to the 1800s in the early days of American politics. John Adams is a blind, bald, crippled, toothless man who wants to start a war with France. We've come a long way from attacking one's personal appearance, or have we? Is this a prime minister? Well, they were horrible when they started portraying the polio victim and stuff like that, but time and time again over the last couple of decades, you could see that you could actually change how people fought and actually behaved at the polls by your ability to discredit the opponent. So if you're not a fan of attack ads, brace yourself. Again, this was day one. By the time we get in the heated election, all three parties will be throwing mud at each other. And more campaign jabs today. Kathleen Wynne was in the heart of auto country in Tecumseh near Windsor, warning Tim Hudak would destroy the industry. The Liberal leader touring an automotive plastics plant. She says government bailouts for the auto sector helped save the industry during the recession. But if elected, Tim Hudak would leave manufacturers on their own. The PC leader previously called a request from Chrysler for government funds, corporate extortion. And as for Hudak, the PC leader was in Peterborough sounding off on what he's referring to as corporate welfare. Hudak making a stop at a stereo equipment factory earlier in the day. He defended companies who took public money but blame the Liberals for forcing them to do it. He says high taxes and energy bills are backing business owners into a corner. And NDP leader Andrea Horvath was right here in Toronto, glad-handing with voters along Jane Street. Horvath meeting and greeting residents with South York Western candidate Paul Feria. Earlier in Brampton, she offered to create a $60 million a year fund to keep fees down and schools open for after-class programs. Horvath also taking a shot at the Liberals, accusing them of breaking promises to school boards about funding, leading to higher fees for community programs.